Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss when we could see an uptick in the Atlantic Basin for tropical development. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Wednesday, July 17th, 2024. The three purple arrows that you see on your screen here, two of them in the middle of your screen are pointed towards tropical waves that we're monitoring, one in the Eastern Caribbean and one in the middle of the main development region. Then the rightmost purple arrow, that is our monsoon trough, and embedded in it is possibly another tropical wave trying to come off the coast of Africa. But right now, none of these areas are expected to develop. You can see their spin and vorticity here on our map, which is like an x-ray of the atmosphere. And the, real, the little red boxes are indicating where our tropical waves are. And then we also have a surface trough just to the north of Puerto Rico, but that's not expected to develop either. As you can see here by the National Hurricane Center's seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. So let's see what the current conditions are in the Atlantic in terms of what we could see and what we could see or not see from uh, tropical development over the next seven days and beyond. So here's the GFS model, 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. Again, that's the spin and energy in the atmosphere, a thousand feet up from the atmosphere. Our two purple hexagons are our tropical waves that we're monitoring at the moment. They are right on south of the big dominant Bermuda Azores High in the middle of the Atlantic, which is suppressing all tropical activity to the south and moving from, from east to west across the Atlantic through the intertropical convergence zone. Underneath that high pressure is a lot of dry air, and part of that dry air is the Saharan air layer and some Saharan dust. And all the green that you see that's being suppressed south of that, that's our intertropical convergence zone and our tropical waves, as you can see here, highlighted by the purple arrows. And in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and portions of the main development region, you can see we have a high wind shear environment. So the combination of the Saharan air layer and dust, as well as the high wind shear, we're not expecting any development in the next seven days on the Atlantic side of things. As you can see here, if we put the GFS model into motion, we don't see anything spin up, but we do see some things try to form on the Pacific side. But even there, the chances of development are quite low. Now, by the time we get to next week on Sun on Wednesday, the 24th, you can see how we're going to have two areas of increased moisture content, the Gulf of Mexico, as well as a, a, tro a huge tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. In between, we'll still see some Saharan air and dust limiting tropical development, as well as we still have a large amount of wind shear in both in all regions of the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the main development region. So even though that we have that potentially large tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa by next Wednesday, it's going to be in a high wind shear environment, so it's not expected to survive. And you can see on the European model, it's pretty much uh, in agreement with the GFS. We're not going to see much development of anything over the next seven days. And that's and true with our ensemble model, as you can see here as well. The European on the left, GFS on the right. All the squiggly lines would be areas of potential development, and we don't have a lot of them. It's just going to be quiet for at least the next week or so. But things will start to change after that. If, we, if you go back to yesterday's video, we discussed the oncoming La Nina and how that's going to decrease our wind shear. And as you can see here, by the time we get to next week, we'll still see a lot of wind shear across the main development region, the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. But by the time we get to the end of July into the first week of August, look at how much the wind shear starts to decrease. That is 
with being influenced by our La Nina that's going to be coming on board as we go towards the peak hurricane season in the months of August, September, and October. And because of that, climatologically wise too, we see an uptick in activity in October. Global Tropics Hazard Outlook from the Climate Prediction Center is indicating we could have a 20% chance of seeing development in the Caribbean or the western portions of the main development region. As you can see here, on week three, valid between July 31st through August 6th. So let's break this down on the models. So we'll use the European model's 45-day Hofmuller diagram. What that means is we're looking at a period of time, 40, 45, 46 days, starting on July 16th, which was yesterday, all the way towards August 26th, towards the very peak of the hurricane season. And you're so that's a the, we're looking at time, but also a cross section of the rising air across the globe in the tropics. So on the left side of your screen would be Africa. On the right side of your screen would be the Atlantic Basin. And then the, where in between would be the Pacific Basin. So I have highlighted here on the left side of your screen our black box, which is indicating rising air from now until the peak of hurricane season with a very little blip in the middle around August 6th of rising air across Africa. And the deeper the colors, light green is light rising air, darker blues is a lot of rising air, and then the reds would be sinking air. So what this means is by the time we get to around July 26th, we're going to start to see a lot of rising air over the uh, African continent. More rising air means more thunderstorms. More thunderstorms mean more tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. And those tropical waves will indicate a greater in, uh, chance of development, which is why we see a 20% chance of development over the Caribbean and the uh, western portions of the main development region, which will coincide here. So I have a, I highlighted another black box where we have our Atlantic Basin on the right side of this screen. So right now we are in a sinking motion, as you can see here at the top of our screen. This is That would be around today. There will be a, more sinking motion as we go through next week, July 21st through the 26th, with a little bit of a Kelvin wave coming through. So that might uptick a pocket of favorability that we'll have to keep an eye on, which is why we still track those tropical waves as they come through. Any area of favorability can be tapped into. But then, by the time we get to July 26th into August 1st, I'm going to add another box here along with the arrow. That is that area of opportunity, that week three, according to the Climate Prediction Center, where we could see tropical development occur. So if you do a cross-section of this horizontal box with our vertical box on the, over the Atlantic Basin, you see an area of light green that is over the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and main development region of the Atlantic. That is a convectively coupled Kelvin wave, which I will add another heart, uh, diagonal box here. That convectively coupled Kelvin wave is currently over the Indian Basin and Western Pacific and it's going to, with time, cross over into the Atlantic Basin by the, by the end of July into early August. So that convectively coupled Kelvin wave, along with the increased rising air over Africa, is turning out those tropical waves, is going to create a very favorable environment towards the end of July into August for tropical development. So that's why we are going to be monitoring this region over the next... Uh, two to three weeks for any favorable areas of development during that time, but really focusing on this towards the end of the month into early August, because based on these models, this is when we could see an uptick once more in Atlantic activity in terms of the tropics. So we'll keep you apprised of all the latest developments as they occur. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button, 
where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you new and like detailed or the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.